Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Abrajadan's Endodontics. Today we are going to see a video on a modified rotary instrumentation technique. Yes. With the advent of the new heat treated rotary files, there is a slight modification in the rotary instrumentation technique uh, compared to the videos that I have earlier shared in my YouTube channel. So this is basically because the heat treated files are more resistant to cyclic fitting and they have very less shape memory. So keeping these two properties in mind, we have come up with a new simplified technique. This technique might sound a little controversial because we are only going to recommend one or at the maximum two rotary files for every case. And contrary to the earlier techniques where we used to recommend 8, 10 and 15 size hand files, here we are only going to recommend the usage of 8 size file. Yes. For more details, just watch the video and at the end of the video, if you have any doubts, feel free to inbox me, I'll be more than happy to clarify your doubts. Okay, here we go. We have three files, an S1 Pro Taper Gold, an F1 Pro Taper Gold and an 8 size K file. Though there are three files, most often we will only require an F1 Pro Taper Gold and an 8 size K file. And as far as the endomotor settings go, I popularly tell the rule of 3 which means the speed will be always at 300 rpm and the torque is set at 3 and the tentative time inside the canal should never be exceed 3 seconds. A contra angle 30 gauge needle is what I prefer. 5.25% sodium hypochlorite with the surfactant will be more effective. And let's see the technique in two different situations. Situation number 1 which is what we'll face in day to day. So we'll prefer to explore the canal orifice with a sharp DG16 rather than locating the canal orifice with the hand file. Once confirming the canal orifice with the DG16, we'll place a few drops of 5.25% sodium hypochlorite in the canal passively making sure the pulp chamber is also loaded with hypochlorite. Now, the tentative working length will be measured from the pre-operative radiograph. Following this, the F1 Pro Taper Gold will be used in a brushing motion inside the canal for just 3 to 5 seconds. The hand files have not been still used in the canal. The file is just used passively in small up and down motion till resistance. In some very wide easy canals, the file might reach the working length even at this step. But in most often situations, like in this particular demonstration, the file reaches the apical third but not the working length. We stop at this stage and copiously irrigate with saline and 30 gauge irrigation needle. And now for the first time we are going to use the K5 that is the 8 number K5. The first motion that will be used is a watch winding motion which will enable help the file reach the working length and we establish an apical patency following which a gentle up and down motion will be given to ensure a smooth glide path. At this stage, the working length will be determined either using an electronic apex locator or a radiographic method. This type of anodontic ruler will be very useful to adjust the working length without using the left hand. Now the canal is again filled passively with sodium hypochlorite. One can appreciate the importance of surfactant in sodium hypochlorite. In this situation, we will be placing the needle just at the middle third, but the surfactant reduces the surface tension of the liquid and can, you can see that the fluid flows freely to the apical third. So it improves the wettability. In most canals, we don't need S1 at this stage, we will again use F1. In the next 3 seconds, passively, if F1 reaches the working length, we can finish the preparation here. 
Following this, again we repeat the copious irrigation with saline. Following which we again fill the pulp chamber and the canal passively with fresh sodium hypochlorite. Now an F1 GP is used as a master cone and we check for the snug fit at working length. If we achieve snug fit at the working length, this will be your final master cone. Even if F1 GP is protruding beyond the apex, it can be trimmed to fit at the apex rather than enlarging the canal to one size larger. The explanation for this will be given at the end of the video. So, we are done with the preparation in situation number 1. Now let's take a look at situation number 2 which is difficult, tough, curved or narrow canals. So in such situations also we follow the same technique. We start with an F1 file but here you can see that the F1 file is finding difficult to go beyond the middle third. So we don't force the file here, we stop, irrigate with saline again and just like in the situation 1, now we try to negotiate the canal with an 8 size K file, first establishing patency in a watch winding motion. Following this, we do check the glide path with gentle up and down motion. Here also we fill the pulp chamber with lot of fresh sodium hypochlorite. And here's the difference. In such situation now, we will use the S1 that is the purple protaper gold. So we measure the working length which is determined just like the previous situation using a radiograph or an electronic apex locator. Now the S1 is adjusted to working length with the endo ruler and you'll find that the S1 will reach the working length very easily tentatively in 3 seconds. This is because the coronal hindrance has already been cleared by using an F1 which will almost act like an orifice opener. So we follow the standard protocol of copious irrigation after every rotary instrumentation, recapitulation with K file, 8 size K file and glide path verification. Now we again repeat the step of filling the entire canal and the pulp chamber with 5.25% sodium hypochlorite and now F1 will be used to working length. Since the S1 has already been used here, now F1 will find its way much easier to the apex. Following this, we again remove all the debris with saline irrigation. Then we fill the entire pulp chamber and the canal with sodium hypochlorite. And now we use an F1 gutta percha as a master cone to verify the snug fit. Just like the previous situation, if you find that the GP is protruding, we trim it to make it fit at the apex. If the GP is short of the apex, we negotiate the canal again, use S1 to working length, irrigate, use F1 to working length, irrigate and then redo the master cone radiograph. Finally, when the snug fit is achieved, we are done with the instrumentation and now the canal is ready for the final irrigation. Alright. It's now time to critically analyze my own technique. So these are the questions that will be running in each one of your mind. The first one is why just one or two rotary files and not follow the entire sequence given by the manufacturer. The answer is protaper gold compared to the original protaper is a heat treated file which is having a much better cyclic fatigue resistance and hence the need for the entire sequence is not needed. The next controversial question will be why F1 directly? The answer is the cyclic fatigue resistance of heat treated files are much better but the torsional fatigue resistance have not improved much. Hence 
a softer and smaller S1 tip is more prone to fracture than a stiffer F1 tip. So that is the reason we start with an F1 which is stiffer but still more resistant to cyclic fatigue and torsional fatigue compared to an S1 Pro Taper Gold. The next discussion is if F1 preparation is sufficient for adequate cleaning of the apical thread. The answer is according to Hapazalo et al in the year 2014, cleaning is achieved mainly by irrigation more than instrumentation. So the size of the preparation should be decided according to the minimum size required for the irrigant to flow to the apical thread. So based on most studies, if the irrigation needle can reach 2 to 3 mm short of the working length, that is enough to sufficiently clean the apical thread. So considering an F1 Pro taper, which is of 20 and 7% taper, so 2 mm short of the working length, the diameter of the preparation will be at least 0.34. And the irrigation needle that we are using is a 30 gauge. So this is an adequate logic for finishing with F1. Now the last discussion is about why only an 8 size K file is recommended. The reason is an 8 size K file is flexible enough and soft to not create any ledge or alter the shape of the existing anatomy which might happen in case of a 10 size file or a 15 size file and that is the reason we recommend the usage of only an 8 size K file in this technique. We are coming up with more such educational videos so if you are interested kindly follow us on YouTube and our Facebook channel uh, that is Dr. Abarajadet Endodontics. Thank you.